this tutorial I will show how to create this simple to-do list application using only CSS, HTML and plain JavaScript. And the best thing about this is that we also have a local storage feature, which means that all the entries are persisted, even when you reload the page or turn off your computer and visit the website again. I created a small GitHub repository for all the code we are going to write in this tutorial. So feel free to, whenever you want, just come back to this link I put in the description, check out the code here at the index.html and you can see all the things we are going to implement in the tutorial. The first thing we want to do is we want to start with a simple empty project. And to do that, I can just open my terminal, say to do list tutorial, um, create it and open it in Visual Studio Code, which is the editor of my choice. And then we wanted to have an index.html file, which is the file we wanted to display inside of our browser. We create this file. I also have to say that it's an HTML file for syntax highlighting. And the next thing is we wanted to have a basic HTML structure. I um, have a link over here. The basic HTML structure is mentioned over here. It's basically uh, HTML element, we have a head section where we put in some important information and then we have a body over here where our main content lives. I would just copy that, insert it here and just for um, illustrating you what's going on here, we say hello world, our first HTML page. Uh, I can just drag and drop that into the browser and we see we have our first website here, hello world plain static HTML. And from here on, we are starting to create our to-do list content. The first thing we want to do is we want to create some static content for our to-do list. So basically creating all the elements we need and later on make them dynamically changing so that you can add list elements and that you can check and uncheck them and delete them. But first just concentrate on the static content. We will put into our application. We start by making a container which will contain our whole to-do list and we also give it an ID. We call it to-do list. And inside of that container, we will have a heading which just says um, what our application does. It's a to-do list. And then we add another container where we put in the input elements for adding a new to-do list item. So the first thing is an input field where we can enter text. We will give it an identifier. Let's call it new to-do. We also need to close it over here. And then we also add a button to add new to-do list items. We say add, which is the text of our button and we can just check it in the browser and we can see we have a heading here, we have an input field, we can enter some text and we have an add button, but when we click on it, nothing happens because we don't add, add any logic yet. And we also want to have some to-do list items. So for that reason, we create another div, give it an identifier, calling it new items. And then we just add a sample item here. We say hello, and we also add a button which says delete, so we can delete our to-do list items. Just refreshing that, and you can see we have our first to-do list item, but again, nothing happens when we click on the buttons, so we will take care of that later. A little bit of styling because that looks pretty shitty and I first wanted to have the whole thing centered. Um, we can define a style part over here where we add CSS styling to our web page. And I want to style my to-do list. The hash is for 
identifier. The hash means we are um, going to filter for an identifier called to-do list, which is exactly this container over here. And for this element, I wanted to have a certain style. I wanted to have a width, which is AD VW, which means it's 80% of the screen width. So we have a little bit of um, space uh, on the left and on the right side, which looks better than making the to-do list a whole screen width. And I also wanted to have text align center because we wanted to have all centered. And for the body, we also wanted to make some CSS definitions. We wanted to make it display flex. And display flex is quite flexible for making um, content alignments in CSS. And because we wanted to center it, we say justify content center and align items center. And we wanted to make the body um, 100% of the viewport high. So it means that the body is um, taking up the whole um, size of the window. And the next thing I wanted to show is something pretty cool because we wanted to make it a little bit colorful. And I just found a really nice website where you can um, copy gradients from. It's called cssgradient.io. So here you can see that they have a bunch of pretty nice looking color gradients. And I just choose this one, click on the copy icon over here, go back to Visual Studio Code and paste that CSS code over here in my, um, in my body style definition. I will save it and go back to our website, reload it. And you can see that we have a nice gradient covering the whole page and we have our items centered. The next thing is we will add some simple logic to add and delete elements. And to do this, we need to write some JavaScript code, which is the programming language mainly used for front-end development. We can do that by adding a script tag to our HTML page where our JavaScript lives in. And we want to define a function which is called addItem. Um, and this one we can call whenever we click on the add button. We can call the function by adding an onClick attribute and say addItem. And now we need to define what happens when we click on our add item function. So just to illustrating you what exactly we are doing, um, we can add a console log statement that sometimes can come pretty handy. We say hello world. And when you go on the website again, we can open the developer tools. You can just do that on the Mac when you click option, command and I. This is a really nice tool which you definitely need as a web developer and when I refresh the page and click on the add you can see that here on the right side we can see an hello world output which means that when I'm going back to my code this function was called and this JavaScript code was executed and now we wanted to add the logic to add a new to-do list item whenever we click on the add button. To do so, we first wanted to get the value we wanted to um, use for the to-do list item. And for that, we need to fetch the value of our input um, element over here. We do so by defining a variable called to-do value. And we use a function called document.getElementById. Um, we're getting an element by its identifier. And because we have defined our input identifier as new to do. We add this over here and then we simply say dot value. This is giving us the value of the input element. The next thing is we wanted to create a new div container, a new item div. And we do that by simply saying document.createElement and defining which element we wanted to have a div container. Then we will give it a class. Let's say it's new item. And we also wanted to give it an unique identifier. 
which we will later use to identify this item when we wanted to delete it or do something else with it. We say that our identifier will be just the to-do value. Now we wanted to set the content of our created container, which we can do by dot inner HTML. We set it to our to-do value, <clears throat> which is just the value the user entered into this input field. And finally, we just wanted to append this to our new items. We can do so by first fetching the new items container. We find a variable called container div and get the element by saying document dot get element by ID new items. And when we got our item, our container div, we can just append the newly created to do list item to it. Now we can delete our statically defined first to do list entry and we can see our to do list application in action. Just reloading the page, adding something here, clicking on add, and you can see that we have our first to do list item, which is not too useful at the moment because we also wanted to have a delete button. Um, so let's go and add a delete button to it as well. We can do so by defining a new element over here, delete button, and this is defined as document dot create element button. Then we wanted to define the text of the button, which we do by inner HTML. We say delete our delete button, we also want to have some functionality, which we can add by saying delete button dot on click equals to function and adding a function name, which we wanted to call. Um, we also define a function delete item, which we will call whenever the user clicks on the delete button. Um, just for illustration purposes, I will add a console log delete item. Then we pass a parameter as well, um, which we say to do item name. And then we'll print it out here first. And then we can simply call this function delete item and passing a parameter, which is our to do value, saving it. And we also want to append this delete button to our new item div. So we say new item div dot append delete button. We save it and we can just check if it's working. Creating a new item. Hello adding it, you can see we have our delete button here. And when we click on it, you can see that a message is printed into the console. Now the only thing we need to add as well as functionality inside of this function. And it should basically look into this container, searching for an identifier, which we have passed into this function and delete the element with that identifier. And to do so, we first wanted to get an element by ID, we wanted to get this element. And inside of this element, we can search for elements with a certain ID. By using the query selector, we use this hash tag over here, which says ID, we are looking for an ID and we are looking for an element with an ID equals to to do item name. And whenever we found something, we just wanted to remove it from our document tree, saving it, testing it once again, adding it, 
deleting it and here we go we have a very simple to-do list in the next step i will explain how to add local storage to it so we can persist our items local storage is an option to save data inside of the browser of the user and this can come quite handy when we wanted to persist our to do items when we refresh the page so let's say i add an item over here and i just refresh my page all is gone and i open the developer tools option command and i just shortly demonstrating what the local storage is doing um, we have basically two methods which we will use during this tutorial we can set item let's say i wanted to have um, test and I set a value over here, hello world. I save it and whenever I can just refresh the page to demonstrate that better to you. And when I say local storage dot get item test, we expect that it's hello world. That's it. And we are going to use this for our to-do list to persist our items. So now we are going to implement the local storage for our to-do list ourselves. The first thing I want to do is a little bit of refactoring because basically this functionality or this function, it should right now do two things. It should add the item to the documentary, to the DOM, but it also should add it to the local storage. And for that reason, we are going to extract some of the logic over here um, and rewrite another function for that, which describes better what it does. It adds the item to the documentary. Wanted to pass the to do value. And we're going to insert this code over here and simply calling it. So we have a little bit of logic extracted. I wanted to pass a to do value over here. And then there's one other thing which I definitely wanted to have for my to do list as a expected behavior. Um, whenever I insert something into the input list and add it to the to-do list, this input field just keeps the text. But whenever you use a normal to-do list app, this text is going to be deleted after you add it to the to-do list. And we just going to do this as well for our application. Um, for this reason, we just want to fetch the input we can just look into our documentary we have to find our input with an id new to do and for this one we are just going to set the value to an empty one go back to our application and whenever we add something the input field is empty again after adding it here we go and now i wanted to have functionality to load and save items to the local storage and we are just going to introduce two new functions for that reason um, the first one is load items from storage and the second one is save items to storage Um, the save items is a pretty easy one. We just wanted to call the set item. Um, we give it a key over here, a name. Um, let's say it's just to do's. And we wanted to use json.stringify to stringify an object which we just passed to the function, which will contain all our to do list items. And that's it. Now uh, we will take care about calling this method in a second. Load items from local storage. It's also a pretty easy one. We just define a variable called stored items and we use uh, JSON again. We wanted to parse a string which we saved previously into the local storage and the item we wanted to parse. It's called to do's. And this one's a pretty cool trick whenever it's empty whenever we don't have anything inside of this, because in the beginning, the user don't have any to-do list items. We just want to have an empty array, which is saved into the variable. And then we say for each item, 
we want to call our newly introduced function add item to DOM and this makes sure that all items are going to be added to the document tree and this method we will call um, later when the user refreshes the page. So first I want to show how to save items to the local storage and this logic definitely goes into the add item method. Um, first we add it to the document, first we add our item to the document tree and after that we wanted to take care about adding it to the local storage. For that reason we first need to fetch our items from the local storage. Local storage dot get item and then to do's or when this is empty in the beginning we just want to have an empty array over here and then we can say we wanted to push a new element to the array this is our to do value and finally we are calling our handy method save items to storage we just pass the items over here and that's it so we are saving the items right now but we are not loading them when we reload the page so for this reason um, javascript has some pretty nice um, triggers or events we can just uh, listen to and uh, react to and in this case we want to react whenever the page got loaded so we say window.onload and we want to call a function to load our items from the storage. So just giving that a try and see if it's working as expected. I think I put in something here before. So just clearing the local storage once. Um, okay, our to-do list is empty. We put in some values here. We refresh the page and here we go. It's all saved into the local storage. We also can double check in the developer tools. You can just see it here. We have our to do saved. That's it, exactly what we want to do. Beside of one thing which is missing at the moment, whenever we delete something from here, it's not exactly deleted from the local storage because when I refresh, the item appears again. So for this reason, we definitely wanted to also make sure that the to-do item is deleted from our local storage. And to do this, we want to um, implement some more functionality over here. It's pretty straightforward. We just fetching our items once again, json.parse from the local no from the local storage we are just getting our to do's item whenever this is not available we are going to have an empty array over here and then we are just going to filter filter is a pretty handy function it's just taking an element and whenever this condition over here um, when the item is not equal to to do value um, when this is true then this item is filtered out and so basically this just makes sure that we filter all our items and when the item name is the same as the the parameter we pass over here sorry for that um, then it's filtered out and now we're just going to save the list again to the local storage and that should do the trick <clears throat> just giving it another try deleting something over here and here we go it's all persisted exactly as we wanted to have it now we're coming to my favorite part of every front-end project it's about styling the website and to do so we use a CSS framework I just selected it's called Pico we wanted to import it first we're just copying this link over here from a content delivery network but for a real project you are way more safe when you add the CSS file yourself into the project but for sake of simplicity we're just using it from a remote origin right now it's just importing a CSS file which is taking care about a lot of styling and they come with a lot of awesome components over here 
For example, we want to use the cards. Where are the cards? Components, cards. This one is cool. We want to give our to-do list a nice card where the whole content is wrapped into. And you can do that by just using the article instead of div. Mm, that looks not too good. Article. Just refreshing it. And here we go. That looks way better right now. We also want to use header for our heading. One thing which I definitely wanted to change is uh, making giving the input field a placeholder. And I just opened the input area here in Pico. I copied this to my clipboard so they explain exactly which kind of attributes we need, we need for an input field. I'm going for the text input field and just copy my um, identifier into the new input field. Okay. Um, and I think we also don't need the, the container here anymore. Just saving it, refresh the page, see where it goes. All right, we have a placeholder text over here. We can also edit it and say, new items go here. And the next thing we want to do is we want to take care about um, the to-do list items. At the moment when we inspect it, we can see that it looks a little bit messy because we have this um, div container, we have a text inside here. I wanted to rather wrap the text into a separated div and we have a delete button, but we also don't have a checkbox so far, so I want to wrap this text into another div and I wanted to introduce a checkbox so we can later implement logic for checking or unchecking our to-do list items. So let's do this and we for sure do this in our add item to DOM method. I'm going to delete this. <clears throat> oh, I also saw that I probably made a mistake. So let's double check this because we have the new item div and we wanted to give it the class new item, but I think that wasn't applied. Here it should say class new item. So I think it's class name. Let's give it a try. Here we go. All right, now we have the proper class name applied to the elements. And now we can say that we wanted to introduce a checkbox variable and we can just create a new element create element it's an input checkbox dot type it's from type checkbox and the name of our checkbox should be to do checkbox And then, as I mentioned previously, I better want to wrap the text of our to-do list item into a separated div. So for this reason, we introduce a new variable, text div, create another element, div, and text div dot, what is it? Text content is equals to to-do value. <coughs> And the class name is equals to to do text. All right, so we have all what is that? Okay. So we have all our elements right now and we just need to append them to the to-do list item in a proper way. We first want to have the checkbox append checkbox, then we want to append the text div and the last thing we want to have is the delete button. Okay, just refreshing it, you can see that the text box, uh, the checkbox is here. Um, it's all looking fine right now, <clears throat> but we just wanted to take care about the styling because I want to have one to-do list item in one column, in one line and this styling doesn't look good to me 
Um, I prepared some CSS statements, which I just want to introduce. And to be honest, I think CSS is a lot about giving it a try and see how it looks and how it behaves. So I just figured out some values, which I think works quite well. And I will just show them to you. So the first thing I want to do is I want to to give this input field a little bit less space so the add button can go into the same line as well and to do this we can just say that we want the new to do to have a fixed width or a width of 60 percent and this makes the add button go into the same line and the input field is a little bit less width uh, wide I also want to introduce some padding to the box container. And I also want to style the items we have. So um, here the new items I just want to style so they are looking better and all in one line. And for this reason, I figured out some CSS values. Um, we want to definitely use display flex. It's quite a flexible way to layout and uh, uh, layout items in CSS. We want to justify content space between, which makes sure that there is some space between the items. And we want to align the items centered. And I also figured out that margin bottom of 10% looks quite nice. And lastly, for our to do text, class we want to have flex one and text the line left so here we go that looks way better you can see for example that we have this um this to do text <coughs> class and we gave it um the text align left so the text is aligned left and next to the checkbox that looks pretty neat and that's all I want to say for styling right now. The last thing I want to show you is how to persist all the um, selected or unselected items. Because right now, when we refresh the page, we don't store if an item is checked or unchecked. And for that reason, we wanted to um, change the structure of the data we are storing into the local storage a little bit. So at the moment, we only have an array with all the to-do list item names. And what I rather want to have is I want to have um, objects inside this to-dos array. I just want to demonstrate that shortly. So I want to have the name of the to-do list item, which is for example, EEE. -E -E. And then I want to introduce another property, checked whether the um, to-do list item is checked or not. And we are just going to implement this in our code right now. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create this object when we call the add item method. So for this reason, we just introduce a new value, uh, a new variable, new object. And this just contains what I demonstrated previously the name of our to-do list item and also a checked property to save or persist if it's checked or not. And <clears throat> we also want to change what we pass into the add item to documentary function. We wanted to pass our new object into that right now. And because we pass this object rather than just the name of the to-do list item, we also need to adjust this over here in the add item to DOM method. Um, we are passing the object right now, so we are just uh, wanted to extract the to-do value and this is just the name from our new object. And we also want to make sure that our checkbox value is applied. So we are going to say checkbox.checked is equals to new object.checked. And another thing we wanted to do is we wanted to add a listener to our checkbox. So whenever the user clicks on the checkbox, we wanted to call a function which takes care about um, storing the right value. So 
I call this function select or unselect. We will implement this in a second and I wanted to pass the to do value and also the checkbox dot checked property. And now we are going to implement this. So we are going to write the function select or unselect. We're passing the to do value over here and the checked parameter. First, we want to go into the local storage and fetch, fetch all items we have. We have done that previously, sometimes here in the code, json.parse. We are calling the getItem method in the local storage. We wanted to get the item to do's. And whenever the item is, uh, when this item is empty, we wanted to have an empty array over here in the items variable. And now we are going to look for our item, um, which has the name equals to to do value. So we found the, the actual to do list item. And now we are going to uh, set the checked um, attribute to the parameter checked, we just passed over here into the function. And finally, we are just going to save all the items into the local storage once again. This is it for for adding the um, the item, but just let me double check. Um, we introduced this object over here, we passed it to our function. So it's added to the document tree, we added the checkbox on click listener. Um, here, this one is also pretty important. Yeah, exactly. Um, we want to um, push our new object into the local storage rather than only the to do list text. And I think there's one more thing missing um, in the delete method. Exactly. Yeah, we are going to um, have the delete method. We are passing our to do item name. And here, we are going through the items in our local storage. And we look if item is unequal to to do item name, but because we introduced the object structure with the name and the checked parameter, um, we wanted to filter for item dot name. That's it. And just giving it a try seeing if that's working right now, persisting all the select and unselect values. I'm going to clear my local storage because there seems to be something broken. New item go here. All right, let's see. Hello. Hello to refreshing. And here we go. Our checked or unchecked values are persisted. A thing I would like to mention, which we need to address over here, I would just open the developer tools once again. And the problem is all about the identifier we use to um, save and uh, delete our elements in the document tree. So let's say I use something with white spaces, right? Hello, white spaces. And I add this to the list. And when I click delete, it's saying, Oh, cannot read property of null. Um, because here at line 42, just check it out. Um, it can't remove the element because it's trying to use the to do item name uh, for the query selector, which is uh, hello white space, white spaces. And this leads to an error because a query selector or an identifier should not include white spaces. So for this reason, we just need to um, come up with another um, option to save uh, or to add an identifier. And for this, I will introduce a new variable um, where we, which contains our identifier. Um, we will just add this over here um, when we add our items the first time. So we say um, id equal to date dot now dot to string. 36. We can just check it out in the developer tools, by the way. 
um, it's just generating uh, something another short string every time which depends on the time on the actual um, date and time and we just put this into our object as well so now we also have a unique identifier and we definitely wanted to use this when we add our item to the DOM. Um, for this reason, we are just using new object dot ID. And let's see if we should do something else over here. Uh, select or unselect, we should also use the ID over here. Dot ID and also for delete we should use the identifier. Um, now adjust the functions. We um, wanted to find an item where the ID is matching rather than the name of the to-do list item because we could also probably have two to-do items with the same name which doesn't make too much sense but it could be the case. Um, so we have it for our select or unselect, that's good. And then we also want to adjust the delete item method because here we do not longer pass the item name, but the ID. We also want to use this in our query selector. And here when we filter the items, we wanted to filter for ID rather than the text of our to-do item. Let's see. So. Whenever we add an item, we add this identifier as well. Then we save it to the local storage. We don't need to change anything here. And this method we also adjusted. So whenever it's added to the documentary, um, we just use this identifier and we also passed it properly to those functions over here. So that looks quite promising. And I will just give it a test run to see if it's working now. Um, we need to clear the local storage first, reload the page and go again for this. Hello white spaces. Hello white spaces. Let's take this two times. Um, select, it's persisted and when we delete, check. It's all working right now. So I think that's it. That's it for a very simple to-do list written in vanilla JavaScript with some CSS styling and basic HTML. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial and see you in the next one.